What's up guys? And thank you for tuning in to the next episode of Pave the Way. Uh, we just want to thank you all for liking and sharing and subscribing our page. Um, we really appreciate that. It helps us get our message out there. Um, so if you could, please subscribe if you haven't. We really appreciate that. Um, today on the show, we actually have Martin Montahan. And Martin is a local business owner. He owns West Metro Driving School. He talks today about building that, that company from humble beginnings and really just shares a lot of cool stories and building that business and that brand. And uh, he's also on the uh, Georgia State House of Representatives. So he dives into his political side and, and talks a little bit about the future of our country. Um, so we really enjoyed the conversation. We think it's gonna bring y'all a lot of value. So without further ado, let's dive in. What's up guys? Thank you all for tuning in to our next episode. Uh, we got our friend Martin Moptahan with us today. Did good. Did great. <laughs> yeah, so Martin, he actually owns a business here in our community, um, West Metro Driving School. Um, super successful business there, so we're gonna get to talk about his business, but he's also um, on the House of Representatives and has been in that role since 2019, right? That's correct. 2019, so he you know, works uh, on behalf of us here in the state and in our county, so we really get to, you know, see both sides of that, the business side plus the the politics side. So I'm really excited to talk to you, man. Thank you so much for coming. Man, pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm excited. So I guess for our viewers, just tell us a little bit about your childhood, kind of your upbringing. I know you graduated from Paulding County, but grew up kind of somewhere else. So just tell us a little bit about your uh, childhood. Well, yeah, so born in Kennesaw Hospital, uh, 1989. Uh, so, what a great year. I know, great year. It's a, it's a great year. Uh, so, born in Kennesaw Hospital, grew up in Kennesaw until I was about, I guess, eight or nine years old. We moved when I was in fifth grade to uh, Paulding County. Maybe it was that summer, if I remember correctly. And uh, we moved out, basically, what was West Cobb County, uh, and it was growing. I mean, it was crazy. You know, I, mean, I think when my mother saw the CC's Pizza, and the Kroger, she was like, hey, look, we, you know, we, we've got to go. You know, this is getting, <laughs> this is getting too crazy. Because a lot of folks don't remember, but like 41 was all farmland. Like me growing up, it was all, you know, fences and fields. And so they started kind of building that up. And my mother was like, nah, if I can hear police sirens, we're not we're not living here, you know. So, so she kind of like packed us up and... Uh, you know, like the Beverly Hillbillies, and we moved out, you know, and and we were happy to, you know, because we, that's what we liked. And so yeah. we moved out from that West Cobb 41 area up there in Ackworth um, to uh, West Pauley County. And so uh, that year I started at Herschel Jones uh, Middle School. Go so, Tigers. Yeah, go Tigers. But, <laughs> and uh, went there, uh, went to Pauley County High School, graduated there, uh, spent way too long in college. Uh, you know, I, People say all the time, they're like, you know, what school did you go to? I'm like, well, it's actually a shorter list if we talk about which ones I didn't go to. <laughs> uh, so went to uh, went to uh, the University of West Georgia. Uh, went to Georgia State University. Went to uh, University of Phoenix. Went to uh, eventually Kennesaw State University, where they felt so bad for me, they finally gave me a diploma. Uh, <laughs> and so that was after uh, many years. I think it took me a total of nine years and you know, that's a part of the story. Uh, yeah. You know, I think that's uh, when you think about, you know, the kind of the the way we were brought up. You know, we didn't have a whole lot growing up. You know, they I think you probably talk to you know, a lot of folks that are uh, you know business people and, and and things and people who have worked and and built companies and I think you hear that story a like, lot. You know, hey, we didn't have a whole lot growing yeah. up, so. You kind of you kind of treasure that, and so once I got you know to be you know seventeen, eighteen, um, I was working. You know, I mean, crap, I was working when I was you know thirteen years old, really. You know, working in yards, doing everything I could to make a dollar, and uh, so you know, you get older and you're working. You're basically taking classes at night, and it took me a while. I think I graduated in two thousand and sixteen. Took me nine years to graduate college, but. You know, look, I'm thankful I got it done and, and got that piece of paper. Uh, you know, a lot of folks say, well, I got a college degree, but it didn't really do anything for me. And I was blessed with a few professors that, you know, one of the benefits of taking night courses, you know, for your viewers that are thinking about taking classes, is you want to talk to the people that are, like, on the front line. Take your night classes. Talk to the adjunct professors. 
that are working at like, you know, Lockheed or Delta. They're the guys that are doing the micromatics. They're the guys that are doing all the statistical analytics. They're the guys that are telling you about the operational, uh, all the operational stuff. And so it's a really cool insight to talk to people that are actually there yeah. and not the academics. And so that really helped me with my business um, at that point. Yeah. Uh, because it, it kind of gave me a different lens on what I was doing. So, uh, but yeah, so graduated there. Uh, so did you start your business in college? Like during oh, that yeah. nine year span? Yeah. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Um, so I did. So I'll backtrack a little bit. So we'll, we'll, me and Rob actually went to high school together. So oh, uh, graduated same class. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, I, I'll give the story. So my mother had worked for a, a driver's education company uh, with whom I'm friends with today, the, the owners there. But uh, she had worked there forever, you know, defensive driving, doing some driver's ed, doing a lot of different stuff. And she like comes up with this wild hair of an idea that she wants to have her own driving school. Right. And in Pauley County, I don't think there was many providers. We had some like, uh, you know, carpet bagger kind of folks coming in that were, you know, didn't have a real location in Paulding. They didn't really have a, you know, they were coming in from other counties like Gwinnett or, you know, DeKalb County or Cobb County. They were coming in, they were serving, you know, Paulding. And so she kind of saw that as a niche. And uh, so she said, well, I want to start a, a, a driving school. And I love my mother. And she is awesome. I mean, she, I mean, she raised three boys unbelievably. And, uh, but business probably wasn't the best thing she's ever been in. So she got a big loan, you know, a lot of people kind of at the beginning ripped her off, you know, and you know, a lot of construction stuff, you don't know anybody. She really didn't have any connections in the community or anything like that. So, um, and she didn't really know how to do that. So she just started the driving school. And so from 2000, I want to say I was in, I was in my last year at Paulding County. I was helping my mother with the driving school. You're kind of seeing what's about to happen with the economy. Mm -hmm. And she's like, hey, I want to start the driving. So we're starting this driving school. We're doing the build out. You know, the contractor takes some money, leaves. And so she's like, hey, what are we going to do? So here I am mudding the walls, you know. And uh, there's, a, there's a funny story in that too. So I had no idea what I was doing. I was probably like 17 years old. And I think probably everybody in this room knows who j -Bo Wages is. Oh, yeah. And so, <laughs> so anyway, we, my mother rented this space. It's old. This is just horrible. I, I don't even know if we should put this in the cut, but this is going to be fantastic. <laughs> so j -Bo's going to laugh when he sees us. j -Bo, love you, buddy. Uh, so, you know, we didn't have any money. I think, you know, we're kind of at the end of the road. Somebody had taken some money and, and all this kind of stuff. So my mother's like, hey, you know, can you boys help me? And I'm like, well, sure. You know, this is like how I got in the driver's ed business because I was like kind of young or whatever. So my mom's like, will you help? I'm like, okay. So I'm like nutting. I'm like tearing out walls. I'm doing demo. We can't even afford a dumpster, you know, like to put the stuff in, like the debris in. So we run a U-Haul truck or maybe like a budget truck. Yeah. And we like fill the thing up. It's like $19 a day or whatever, right? And the mileage, so we're going to the dump. You know, it's not very much mileage. 2007 we're filling this thing up i mean we're cutting wires out of these buildings like you know just doing what we could it was a yeah. i mean it was a, it was a like a nail salon type deal you know they yeah. had all those plugs oh it was a tanning bed i think yeah, maybe yeah. Like tanning, maybe both. and you're in a whatever it takes mindset of that yeah. oh yeah i yeah. mean there was whatever no you can do yeah the you know, money I mean, was gone right money had ran out yeah money's gone there. i mean and, and you got to think like we kind of grew up hard money was like never there so it was it was almost like a do what you got to do mindset from the get go. Yeah. You know, I, I I say that was that was my rabid animal phase. Um, and so so anyway, we're getting this place out, and I remember, you know, back then you didn't have to have a commercial contractor's license to do any of this stuff. This is like the year that it changed, and so we yeah. got we got in like right before. I always think to myself like, what would have happened if these things didn't exist at the time in which they did. Like yeah. these allowances, you know, yeah. or these regs didn't, didn't, you know, didn't exist or they did exist, maybe it's a better way to say it. And so we're ripping stuff out, you know. I remember the first class, like we were working so hard to get there. I had worked all night finishing the room for the first class, the first defensive driving class. <laughs> Guy gets there like 8.30, you know, like one of the students, one of like five students for the course. I'm like, 
what I I was like mudding whilst in the and you know how like mud kind of starts with the sheen and that kind of starts drying out, mm -hmm. you know. You think, I'm like I'm like painting it. Like I, I ain't got no time, you know. Like we're painting this. I don't really care. It ain't dry, but we're painting I got a it. Class. You know? Whatever. Yeah. We got class coming in, so I'm hitting it. You know, I look like crap. I got you know. I only place this open 24 hours back then, you know, post COVID, they're not open 24 hours as Walmart. Yeah. So, you know, you're like, you got two cheap 98 cents br brushes in your hand, you know, yeah. <laughs> you're trying to roll everything. And so, uh, but anyway, we're successful. We have our first class there and uh, we kind of tread, tread over there. But what, what really invited to, you know, uh, you know, the the basic business concepts, you know, basic business plan, things like, you know, how many students we're going to need to be able to pay rent and all this stuff. So yeah. fast forward like a year, you know, during this period of time, and uh, we're basically in like $100,000 of debt, you know. Yeah, like, yeah I mean, we're behind on rent and all this other stuff. And one year in. Like one year in, yeah. I mean, it was it was like, you know, you had all the construction stuff from the get-go, you know, the credit union next door was like scratching their head whether or not this was a good idea to give us any money at all. And uh, so, but this time's like 2008, like maybe mid 2008. And now the writing's on the wall with the economy. Yeah. Things are getting bad. Like, yeah, it's getting real bad. Yeah, these yeah. are, you know, the, the election's happening or maybe has happened to this point. And, you know, so by, this is like Obama time, right? This is 08. And so I'm calling my buddies and, uh, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, what's, what's happening where you are? And they were a few years ahead of me. Uh, they graduated Paulding. They went to UGA, Terry College of Business, and they're like, hey, look, you know, from what we're hearing, it's hard to get a finance job. It's hard to get anything. And I'm going to all these different schools, you know, trying to figure out my way. And, you know, it's, yeah. I was thinking I'm going to get a finance degree or I'm going to do a business degree. And I looked at my brother. My brother was getting a psychology degree, uh, probably to put up with me. And uh, <laughs> we were like, hey, why don't we just go all in on this driver's ed thing? Like, let's just figure this out instead of trying to do the college thing right now because it's not going to be productive for me to get out of here and make, you know, mm -hmm. 27K or whatever. Being yeah. a yeah, bank it's probably hard to watch your mom sit there and yeah, struggle. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think, I think my mother, I think what we, you know, what she wanted to do was teach kids because mm -hmm. she loves kids. Yeah. yeah. But I think with every business, you know, you start with what you want to do and you end up basically doing paperwork, right? You end up, you, you end up running off. I think you just stabbed me in the heart. Uh, <laughs> so true. <laughs> but that's just the way it is, you know? And it's like, and so you get kind of caught up. There is no, hey, I'm not spending any time behind the wheel. I'm not spending any time in the classroom. You know, now I'm worried about regulatory compliance. I'm worried about tires and car and, and all this other stuff. Maybe not cars for her, but you know, that's kind of the normal thing. Then you hire these people out to do the job that you were doing that you actually love. And so it, it was kind of a spark right there with all these things, this kind of confluence of these different, you know, environmental things, whether it be the economy or, or the debt or whatever. So I feel terrible because we grew up, you know, didn't have a whole lot. And I'm like, my mother's got $100,000 in debt. Like, what are we going to do? You know, like $100,000 might as well have been a billion. Yeah. We had, that, well, that like, was we a had. lot of money then too. I mean, a lot's changed since 2008. Yeah. It's just it that has, mindset. But... Like you're 19 or 18, you got a hundred thousand debt. You've never had anything. It's just, it's all like big picture. It looks huge. Yeah, I mean, you you know, this is like a hundred thousand dollars. Like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. like I said, it could have been a billion, and I would not have noticed the difference because yeah. it, it was a it was a tidal wave. And so, so me and my brother kind of sit down. And by the way, I, I think I have to mention my brother here because you know he's like yin and yang. We do everything together. And uh, older or so younger, he's older, he's two years older than I am, and so but he's been awesome. Uh, sometimes I think it's probably better for y'all to interview him. He's he's uh, <laughs> he's he's a guy that gets it done, so uh, but anyway, right, so we go to my mother, and I'm like, hey, look, finance ain't looking too peachy right now, you know, maybe we should think, you know, do some other things, and uh, and so my brother's like, hey, look, you know. I really hate going to school anyway, so I'm with him. You know, like, I'm with stupid, basically. You know, I'll, I'll do whatever this idiot wants to do. And uh, at least for the time being, you know, what are you, 20, 18, 19, 20, whatever. So we just made a decision, like, we're going to go all in. And so we told our mother that. We're like, hey, look, you've got this debt. You're about to quit all this anyway. You're about to assume this lease that you owe to, which is like, you know, that's not a fixed debt. 
right? That, but it isn't a debt you owe. I mean, a lot of people don't think about leases that way, but you know, you have the privilege of paying it monthly. You know, a lease and is you effective. signed it for and a year, three years, yeah, whatever. That's right. So you signed the lease, and so you know, it's it's a it's a note payable to another person. So if she were to have quit, she had a five year lease. She was like a year and a half in. You know, there was a lot of these different factors that we're thinking about. We're like, well. If we're going to assume all the risk from family, we might as well just step in and see if we can't do something. So yeah. we start the first driver's ed program. We And remember, the economy's already kind of going down. And, well, how are we going to do this? Well, you know, we recruit, you know, basically my mother's like, well, I want to teach a course. I'm like, okay, well, you go teach a course, but we'll set up all the business side of things. And so we go to Hardy and we're like, hey, you probably have some trouble, you know, selling these cars. We think there's a new, there's a new avenue. So this is our first driver's ed car ever. Mm. So we met, and I don't know that the guys who I know there now were there then. It was a different set, but we basically made a deal that for the whatever that we were going to get the price of the vehicle, they were going to pay us a month in advertising. Oh wow! And so, but as long as we put the Hardy logo on the back doors, right? Genius! Did you come up with that, or your brother? I came up with that. Let's go. That's great. great. I mean, but here's the reason why. And it was 08, so they're not selling as many cars type deal? Yeah, 08, not selling as many cars. And so <laughs> I came up with this idea to do this. And here's the reason why we did that, because I didn't have any money. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing <laughs> it's crazy what you what come, up, come with. up with when you're broke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I can you speak are the most that. creative person in the whole wide world when you have zero dollars. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that right now. Uh, so anyway, we come up with this, this old cockamamie idea, you know, that we're going to do this. And surprisingly, again, they say yes. And uh, and so we, we get our first driver's ed program. And we start it right there. One car, I mean, I've got pictures, I'm sure, of that little old car. And man, it's, I mean, we just burn the miles up on it. We put, we put it out there. And we go back now to get to construction. Now, I was telling you about... Jabo wages, so maybe y'all yeah. need to cut this, cut back in. I'm, <laughs> gonna, I'm just going to keep talking. No, I love it. it. I do. love it. But uh, so Jabo comes in. This is at the first. So let's let's skip back a little bit, and we're going to go to the next construction <laughs> project. So we skip back a little bit, and then so we do all this construction. I'm ripping out wires and all this stuff. And I mean, you know, these things are wired 240. Mm -hmm. I've got this Home Depot book because this is like really before you find reasonable information on the internet, right? I mean, it was there, presumably, right? Yeah. But not like now. It wasn't like, like YouTube today. today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, so I got this like Home Depot book. I had to switch a breaker panel from 240 to like single, like from, the, you know, dual pole to single pole or whatever, wow. you know. And I'm like, why well, all this stuff in the wilds and I'm blowing out equipment, you know, because I don't have anything that's cordless, you know. Yeah. Like, I've got this old, like, 1984 Black & Decker screwdriver. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't have any, like, you. it has one speed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, God. You know, but we're still, like, we're doing everything we need to with it, right? Like, and it's a multi-tool, right? It isn't, like, when you're broke, like, one tool does everything. Yes, right. right. That, that's the most Hammer, important thing. Drill, yeah. exactly <laughs> Hammer, right. drill. Hammer, drill. Drill resilient when you got to be. Yeah, beat something with it, whatever you need to do, right? So, so anyway, so we get done. And like the paint's drying out the doors. And Jabo, when I hate this, because Jabo's going to know I lied to him. <laughs> <laughs> so Jabo comes in the back door, because I remember, so I didn't see him go to the front door. I was like, you know, it's supposed to be here, you know, what, nine o'clock or whatever time it was. But he comes to the back door, which we had open because we were trying to let all the paint dry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I guess maybe to us stupid kids, you know, we were thinking, well, he'll come to the front and it'll give it more time to dry. We, you, know, you have no idea. I, I, who knows what kind of ideas are going there yet, but we have the back door open. And he comes to the back door. Paint's drying on the walls. It's obvious that we've done, I mean, I've laid the carpet in this place. I mean, I went to Home Depot, got the nastiest glue. It stinks like glue. I mean, you got, there's like holes in the ceiling tiles. There's like, you know, you can tell where the partition walls have been took down because it was a flat finish, and then where the partition walls were, you know, it looked like a Mexican villa. You know what I'm talking about? Where you just kind of, because I didn't know how to do anything. I was like, well, just, you know, we'll do, spa do. We'll do a spackle mud on this one and, uh, and paint it. So it's like drying and everything. He's coming in. He's just looking around like, oh, God, this was exactly why we're about to pass these regs. And <laughs> You probably played into that. 
passing of that. A hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think there's been several things I've, I've played into on that type of stuff. But so it comes to the front, and I had must have just fallen asleep. Me and my brother, I had stayed up all night fixing this place, wow. getting it ready. And J Bo comes in, and he's like, "This is like the first rendition of the whole place, or whatever." And J Bo comes in, and he's like, "Hey, good morning." <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I'm like, I'm, I'm like on the wall, like back right here, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, y'all can't see it from your camera, but I'm like, literally, like, there's no furniture in this place, and I'm just like this, <laughs> like asleep, like totally asleep, and so is my brother, you know, and we're just, we're dead, we're dead to the world. He wakes us up, and he's like, he had one question, he's like, did y'all do any work in here? <laughs> Oh man, looks like just like the way it was. We got here. We can put some paint out, you know. Well, you got to cut that. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but you know, Jay, I love that though. But Javo's just like you know, he's like, uh huh, yeah, uh huh. I just he's, like that it shows that you know when you start something, how hard it can be. Because so many people think I can start this business and it's going to be easy, you know. But y'all are literally up there all night long, and you it, and your brother, to make it succeed for your family. You know, mentally prepares you to hear how hard something is going to be. Yeah. People think you can just jump in, but no, dude, you got to be ready to, for it to be that hard. So you're 20 or you're 19 or 20 years old. Yeah, y'all started your first 18, class after 18. you redid a whole building. 18, so your brother's 20. Yeah. You got your first car. You got your first car advertisement for free. The Bye thing five. that I love about that story so much is the determination. Like yeah. the fact that, the fact that, and I, you said something that struck a nerve with me earlier, like coming and not really having a lot growing up. I think it shifts another drive in you that is just like, you're gonna be resilient against this stuff. So. That story, so many people can resonate with that because, man, it doesn't matter necessarily how much what you come from. If you'll put in the hard work, and if you'll want to make that change, you can do it. Y'all, you had, I mean, you oh, yeah. you did it. You know that, what I mean? It's like what what an opportunity that you saw. And a lot of people would see the debt. Oh, I got to do this as like, oh, I don't want to do with that. But you saw opportunity in that. And you saw your your mom at 18 years old. Like I, I, I think about we're like we're helping 20, 21 year olds, 22 year olds right now, trying to get them on like career paths and like help show them what to do. Man, at 18, you saw a risk, but you said, hey, I'm 18, but I'm all in. Yeah. I'm all in right it now. Said opportunity. And maybe it was the family influence because it, it would be hard to watch my mom struggle, but you still had to make the decision. And, and now here you are, which we're not there yet, but here you are later successful from that decision you made at 18. That's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, no, no, doubt about it. no doubt about it. Yeah, it was, uh, so, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't want my mother to have that, you know, that debt. I didn't want her to be saddled with that for the rest of her life. And so you make decisions, I think, for your loved ones and everything mm -hmm. else that you wouldn't otherwise make. So we get started, you know, and then we, we open up. So we've, so let's, we'll skip back to the point where now we've kind of assumed. And so now we've got to make changes to the classroom, right? And by the way, th these were never approved by anybody. And so we, we have to make the classroom look bigger so we can, you know, afford more space. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we make the classroom a little bit bigger. And again, here's, here's the whole story again. You know, we're staying up night after night after night, getting this thing running, trying to get more classroom space to put now a big class that's coming in that we never expected to have. I think it was like 14 students, which is crazy because now we got hundreds and about hundreds, hundreds, right? And so you have like 14 students coming in. And again, we work all night. At this point, I'm living at the office. Wow. I'm living there. So I've got a couch. You know, I'm totally devoted to, you know, making the business successful at this point. We're now in step B. You know, I've gone from having, you know, uh, a little bit in the count now to having a little bit more. And so I'm living there. I go down to Anytime Fitness. It used to be in that shopping center next to Babcock, you know, and I was like, hey, I want to make a deal with you. He's like, what's that? Of course, you know, being broke, you make, uh, you creative. That's where the right? best deals are started. <laughs> I'm going to make a deal with you. He's like, what's that? And he's like, you know, just trying to make a sale. Well, I guess he's a salesman. He's like, Mike, look, I'm only going to come in here after 12 midnight. I'll never be in here later than like 6 a.m. I'm not going to use any of your equipment except for your shower. <laughs> and he's like, okay, well, you know, the membership back then was like, I don't know, like three, four hundred bucks. I was like, but I don't want to pay you 150 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's like, okay, sure. Come on in. So 
we got a membership there. We were living up there. That's, that's kind of, and that's where you took your showers. Yes, I took my shower. So <laughs> stay up all night. I'm working. That's, wild. I'm that's getting, real dedication. I yeah. mean, that's. I'm, I'm getting the dang place set up, and uh, <laughs> I sleep on that front couch. My brother was behind the desk. He was laying on the floor, and I'm sleeping on the couch. I've got this blank. I'm used to managing. Just, I'm, I'm just laying here, you know, like this. Yeah. <laughs> And I've got this blanket right here, and I'm sleeping. And the door, the front door is right here. And he like, I, I see my mother come in, and all these students behind him, and I just pull the cover over my head. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to imagine how, like, embarrassing this was. You know, I'm like, yeah. oh, God. You know, but you've been up all night. You're tired. I went back to sleep, I'll be frank with you. Uh, <laughs> and because uh, I was thinking, at this point, there's nowhere else for me to sleep. So you do what you got to do. Uh, so that was like point B. So we're kind of starting out, we're doing those kinds of things. But I remember, you know, when I think about business, y'all, y'all tell me, shut up, y'all are done. Oh, I'm I, loving I, the story, uh, man. Yeah, y'all, y'all can, there's all these little stories, but I remember, so me and my brother take over the business. And this was, this was, you know, back to the initial days when we're kind of assuming all the debts. And so, we kind of chart out all the accounts, you know, and, you know, back then, this is before you had like, I already knew a whole lot about different programs that would do this for you. So, you know, I've got like, you know, the, 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 the big calendar, you know, on, on the desk, you know, mm-hmm. big yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, daily calendar, or whatever month you tear it off every month. And, uh, so we're just writing all the stuff on the back, you know, all these accounts. So we pay all the payments, not all the debt. We pay all the payments off, and we get three hundred and seventeen dollars. Mm. Like that is the money that me and my brother had in the entire world mm. was three hundred seventeen bucks. It's crazy you remember the exact amount. You know that's yeah. how you, those hit you different when you yeah. know the exact amount. So we have three seventeen, and we're like, what are we gonna do with three hundred seventeen dollars? I was like, man, the only way to make two dollars is, you know, spend one. Mm-hmm. So we went out and we got we, we found a, a guy named Herschel. His name was Herschel Burden. He used to own a place called Herschel Science Center. And he was a hoot, man. This guy was awesome. Loved it. He's not there anymore. I forget there's a plumbing place where he was, but he was kind of behind the behind the old Ingalls in the old movie theater in Dallas. Mm-hmm. So he had a science shop, whatever. I was like, Hey, what would you you know, what would you charge me? to do some science. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, I think that back then it was like $4. I was like, hey, can you get me like 50 of them? So we spent $200 or whatever of this, you know, 317 bucks to uh, to print some signs out. And then we're like, hey, we got enough left over to go eat Taco Bell. You know, <laughs> uh, we're, we were happy as a clam. Uh, so, so we go get these signs printed out. He gets them to us, you know, after like, a little while and we put them out. And so at this point, we've had some moderate success. It's like 2008. We got $317. Now we spent 200 of it, which feels terrible. I mean, just imagine spending two thirds of your bank account. You're, you're not going to feel great. No. So basically the business, you get the signs out and yeah, the business so starts doing well. That's right. So we, so we, we get these 50 signs out there everywhere. And the phones start ringing. You know, I felt like, you know, Jurassic Park, you know, it's like the phones are working, right? And so finally, because you got you got some pickup, you know, you got some stuff going. So we start making some money and we start putting back some stuff. And and uh, so we start doing like the normal stuff. Like, because we haven't thought about doing anything. Everything that we've done up to this point has been guerrilla marketing, yeah. right? There really hasn't been like, hey, let's print out business cards. And there was no social media then. I mean, there was no way to go advertise there. That's right. I mean, yeah, there was some like that was back. That was right when like, space, yeah, and it was Facebook coming were like merging. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you had like all the uh, pay per click ads on on Google and stuff like that. That was kind of you know the new frontier back then. But so now we've got you know the phones ringing or whatever. So I remember. And look, growing up poor, I used to tell people all the time, I was like, you know, like, well, what did you eat growing up? And I said, well, I, I ate two-color chicken all the time. People were like, well, what's two-color chicken? You know, I've never heard of that before. I'm like, well, that's when your mama cooks fried chicken, but, you know, she only puts that much oil because she's not paying for more oil than that, you know. <laughs> so she puts about half a chicken deep 
She'll fry one side and then flip it. You know, maybe she'll start watching you know, Law and Order or Cops or whatever's on TV. And then, you know, she's like, oh, man, you know, I've got chicken on the stove. She'll run back in there. So you got one that's kind of, you know, like tan and one that's kind of like real brown, you know, it's two color chicken. So, you know, and, and, and that was kind of what, you know, we ate growing up. So eating out was a luxury. And I tell people this all the time. It's like, I can count on one hand how many times we ate out. Wow. Like going out to eat. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think there was like a time at Shoney's and I knocked over a drink. I remember because I was probably so excited. Uh, that was that was a childhood trauma. And then uh, you've got uh, you know, a few times at Ryan's or whatever like that. So basically, you know, we had eaten at home all the time, you know, and, and that's how we were raised. And I'm coming right out of my childhood here. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've been a family, you know, mom was raising us, whatever. And so we go straight into this, you know, uh, this world now where we have three thousand dollars in the bank. Well, by God, I'm going to the Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> like seriously, I mean, it was it. You know, didn't have soda growing up. Didn't have any of that. You know, you went, you got out of spigot. You know, and uh, and so you had the tap. You know, and so that's where you got your water. And so, which I'm at. By God, I'm going to Taco Bell. So I walk in. I've got business cards. Because now I'm a made man. I've That's got right. Three, I've got three thousand. It's crazy what a business account, card makes you feel like. You know, yeah. this is. I mean, I might as well have a big wallet. And so, uh, not that I wasn't, not that I wasn't totally encumbered at this point still with with debt, but I'm a made man. You know, I, I know I've got three thousand dollars in my bank account. I'm about nineteen years old. So, eighteen, nineteen, I'm middle class. I walk in, and there's these guys who I went to school with, and I'm like, hey guys. Good to see y'all again. I'm, you know, I started my own business. You know, of course, you hand out your card. It's got this little mouse on there. Y'all see my mouse? Oh, you know, yeah. From West Metro Driving School mouse. And they just laugh. I mean, they're busting out laughing. Mm -hmm. Like laughing at you. Oh, laughing at me. Man. Like, this guy's a joke. Man, that's what we call a dream killer. Yeah. Try to be. Was yeah. it the mouse? Was it the logo? And who came up with the logo? Yeah, so the mouse, the mouse came from... We knew we needed a mouse, so that was part of the transition when we took over the company for my mother. It was like, hey, you know, we got to do some different things and bring people in. And our first thing was like, well, if it's good enough for Disney, it's good for, enough for us. So we found some website back then where you could buy these, you know, characters. You have a commercial release or whatever back then. You know, you could do all that kind of stuff. So we eventually bought that from somewhere. I couldn't even remember what, where to tell you now. But so we buy this thing and, you know, it's, it's on all of our literature, you know, the little West Metro mouse. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so they're just laughing and I'm, and I'm, you're right. I mean, yeah, it just, it just crushes your soul. Yeah. So I go up there, you know, I'm sure I got my grilled stuff burrito or whatever, you know, <laughs> and you know, I got my, I don't even have my bias back then. So I was even more depressed. I probably went and got like a Pepsi or something, you know. <laughs> I was like, well, crap, I got my grill stuff, got this. I've got no hopes and dreams at this point. They made fun of my mouth. Yeah. 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 And it's I'm, funny because at that age, you're so much more influential, too. Like, you're, what would you say, you were 20 years old or 19 oh, yeah, at that like, point? Oh, yeah, not even that. Like, it 18, hurts way 19. worse it at 19 hurts way worse than it does than, when yeah. you're 30 and somebody says you suck. That's right. You know, but the phone's still ringing, so we, there's hope. You yeah, know what I mean? absolutely. So, you know, we, you know, I'm driving this, you know, old Toyota Cross, like, you know, get in my car, you know, turn this whole fortune over, you know, put my burrito here, but, Put it down, drive away, you know, super sad or whatever. But the phone's still ringing. Mm -hmm. There's hope. That's it. I turned one dollar into two, so now let's see if we can't turn two into four. And so after that point, I really just like, hey, you know what? I ain't worried about that. Yeah. Let's keep on, you know, let's keep keeping on or whatever. And so we do. And then we, we hire our first employee outside of my mother, who is basically like, Lord, boys, I can't do all this by myself anymore. You're going to have to get somebody to come in here and help me. And we were not, our task was never to be, you know, driver's ed instructors, right? Our task was simply, I mean, really, if, if the, if there was a goal at that period was, hey, let's just get mama out of debt. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Let's just get through this lease yeah. and we'll make all decisions later on what we want to do. There was never any like, you know, you know, visions, like grand visions that we were yeah, going to be, business you know. plan that you had to sit nah, down and figure nah, out. Man. I mean, you know. I mean, I'm still sleeping on the couch, right? Yeah. Uh, and so 
we're just trying to we're just trying to make it. Yeah, you know, survival make, mode. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, kind of like, and, and that's you know par for the course at that point. You yeah. know, you're just trying to make it. Heck, that's what we're all just trying to do. And so, but the phone's ringing, and that's the most important part. And so we just continue to do that. I think until like 2012, maybe 2011, I was making $300 a month. I mean, my living expenses are paid for in the office, you know, and this is several years now. This is like yeah. three, four years. I'm just living there. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the things, you know, well, and I take that back. Me and my wife got married. So in 2008, we got married. So, um, but we move out for a lot of different reasons, but we move out to Cherokee County and, and I'm commuting back in. So there were some, there were some different things. That timeline's a little bit warped, but it's hard going back you know, almost 16 years now, yeah. you think about these things. So basically, yeah, my mother's like, look, we need help. And so we hire our first person and uh, who's still with my company, by the way. That's awesome. Uh, awesome. He's incredible. Uh, so Joe, if you're watching, we still appreciate you, but does an incredible amount of work for our company. Um, he comes and helps. And right over the next, you know, 15 years or 14 years or whatever it's been since that point, you know, we've went from me, my brother, and my mother, and then we added one, then we added another, right? And each one is a colossal step because, you know, your first employee is like your first employee ever. You're thinking, gosh, what, you know, I can't believe I hired somebody. Yeah. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. And now I think we float somewhere around 67 employees, I think. How many? 67 wow. right now. Wow. You know, some full-time guys, some part-time guys and gals. At one location? Uh, yeah, over here. One location yeah, and one. In Dallas. Yeah. That's right. That's the one right. you built? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, it is it is interesting, I think, the the scale and the scope and where it's gone really over these fat past few years. It's amazing. In 15 years, I mean, you know, it's, it's grown, you know, substantially from having $317 in your account and, uh, and putting 200 bucks down. Uh, how many vehicles, site. how many vehicles do y'all have now with that business? We're at 12 now. Um, uh, you know, these guys are part-time. So the car start, you know, it's, it's interesting when you think about driver's ed because everybody wants to have their own time. You have your, you know, your adult crowd, you have your foreign crowd, you've got your teenage crowd. And so, you know, you have sessions starting like 7.45 in the morning and these sessions cascade all the way throughout the day and we drop off our last student at 9.45 p.m. Oh, wow. So presumably, and especially during the summer when we're so busy, uh, when the kids are out of school, mm -hmm. you know, these cars will literally run 12, 14 hours a day. Wow. I mean, just totally heat soaked, running. I wanna, we have a 2015 Toyota Corolla and it's around 450,000 miles. Wow. wow. You just know. keep a mechanic on deck, like at the oh, place. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, you yeah. Got, yeah. Yeah. We got, we got, yeah. So, I mean, and, and we've been through brake systems and transmissions and motors and everything, anything, everything you can imagine those vehicles, we swap them out. That's so uh, inspiring to me, though, man, just to see, because I had, you know, we, we were on rotary together. I've known you for a while, and I had no idea that it was that grassroots of, because I see now, you just built this nice building. You got this beautiful facility where you're at. I see all the cars. A beautiful like, family. It's like the yeah, overnight I, you know, millionaire syndrome. We got we got to kind of see the the after the grind. You know, like right. you know, and it's so cool and it's so inspirational to see that grind and now see where you're at. Man, the, yeah. it, the humble beginnings. It just it, we go back to it all the time. It's just so cool. Let's talk about scaling this thing. So you you hire your first guy and then you kind of systemize that all the way up to 67 because dude that's a huge jump well i mean we started three years ago with us three plus like two and now we're at 10 or 11. Right. you know that's in three years but to go you said 14 years like how do you get from one to 67 employees just figuring out the system and making it work yeah there's a lot create, more to you, it you, you create demand. dollars make you four dollars you create demand so you my role you was know, it the technology over, or the sector that driving schools in like did it get more popular too over this time no in fact oh. I tell people, so when we go into a different market, so we just opened up a new one in Cartersville, Georgia. And so that market isn't as strong because they haven't had our influence. Hmm. And so we feel like our influence in, in West Georgia area has kind of 
has been oversized to where we have created a program that people actually want to attend. Uh, you know, I think there was curriculums out there from the get-go with these driver's ed programs. And part of that is, you know, just me and my brother brainstorming things that we want to do. And, you know, we could be here forever and talk about all the different things, but making a product or a service that people actually want to purchase yeah, um, that has that has intrinsic value to the person who's purchasing the good, right? So, you know, the parents, especially in this area, I think they have identified us as a brand name. Yeah, yeah. You know. Agreed uh, a thousand percent. So, and people know that, hey, if I go here, you know, it's gonna be qualified instructors, the cars are gonna be safe, you know, they're all using Michelin tires, you know, they're doing all the right things, you know, performance braking systems to keep my child safe. You know, the instructors are gonna do the things I need to do. If I get in the car, there's a dash cam, dual facing, student driver, uh, instructor, and the road ahead of them. You know, they know that these are the things that we're doing, mm -hmm. and we've built that brand, you know, over the, over the past 15 years. And so with that, not only with those kind of intangible things, intangible things, but, but some of the intangible things is people can just rely on us to do, to do the job in a very professional manner and take care of them. Man, they so don't have to, they don't have to worry about it. So, you know, some of that planning has happened over the time. But when you say, how do you scale out to sixty seven employees? You create demand. Yeah. And okay. so, in sixteen years, my goal has been to fill classroom. And so, you have your first location. We close it now. We're totally full, packed out. You know, in two thousand, this is like two thousand twelve. Probably we move to our next location. That's right up on the highway on that hill, and. We we now have two classrooms. Well, by twenty twenty, you know, COVID time, I guess, or right before COVID, we're packed. I mean, there's not an inch to move, right? So we we're, we're kind of seeing the end of a five year lease, and we're like, what are we going to do? And now here we are in a new location, and now we have three classrooms, all much larger, packed out. Right? Wow. I mean, packed out. First class we get totally packed out, <clears throat> especially for in-person live classes with, with the instructors and, and, and all the technology. I mean, we've got 80 inch touch screen and you know, they come in and they can they can look at a at a map. You can pull up a Google map of any in intersection in Pawnee County if a kid has a question and we can tell them who's got the right of way. We can draw on the board. You know, it's like uh, it's like, you know That's incredible. Monday night football. Yeah. You didn't have amazing. to do uh, you didn't have to do all the painting at the new one probably either, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> got to hire a painter. I did so. see you working hard the other day unloading that uh, truck, though. So he's yeah. still, he, he'll still get dirty. Yeah. He'll I, still I, get I, down I, and dirty. I've got some fire left in me, you know. So you hit a good subject, and, and it'll transition kind of into what you do now. But you talked about building a brand and, you know, kind of how I see it. Like, Rob's real big on this, too. But, uh, like, in sales and insurance, we just wanted to become people of interest. And so we started building a brand that way, saying, like, here's what we do. Here's this and that. But here's that our brand, rap video. Yeah, here's our rap video. We can, this, we can, thank we you. sound like rednecks, but we, but Ryan wrote us a rap song, okay? Um, <laughs> Shout out. But we're building this brand, and you know it kind of correlates into not only that, but it becomes the integrity of your business, the character yeah. of everything that sits there. You build this brand not only so they'll come, but also you've built a brand now to where people see you at business, but now you got a face outside of there too. So how did you transition? I know that I kind of want to get into that story, sure. but. Building the brand, I want to hit on building the brand first because building a brand is something that's huge. I mean, no matter where you're at, like if you're trying to do a sales, or if you're trying to start a business, if you're really just trying to brand yourself at work, being the best employee there, brand is huge. Yeah. So you build a successful brand and then I know what it leads into next for you, but tell them like right. you build so, the brand and then you end up here. Right. So, I mean, you know, we, that's I think where we started with all the, uh, you know, with all the mouse, you know, back then his name was Henry T. Mouse. Uh, like What's his name now? Yeah, his his name now is Drivers Ed Mouse. <laughs> oh, Drivers Ed. I got it. Drivers Ed. Oh, I like Ed. it. So now he's Drivers Ed. Uh, I got to thank a buddy for for that one. He he told me that. So we changed his name to Drivers Ed. It was much better. I like that. <clears throat> but you know, so you create a brand. You do things that are unexpected. When you went to our first office, I had a canvas painting of you know Henry T. Ford showing off. You know, I'm sure it was like a flathead, you know, yeah, old car, uh, old, you know, uh, motor. And so, but I, I superimposed the mouse's face on, uh, on, you know, Henry Ford. <laughs> so Henry people would mouse. come in, you know, and they'd like, 
because I, I had some deals with Photoshop going up, you know, with computers. I mean, one thing that I was blessed was my mother bought us a computer going up. And it was so important because that really gave me some a leg up, you know, to do some things. Like my brother's an incredibly gifted computer person. Uh, he built the first two or three websites and uh, for us, for our business. This is back like HTML. You know, this, I mean, he was back on GeoCities, you know, like building stuff, you know, yeah. when we were kids. And I'm like, what are you doing, bud? You know, like, <laughs> let me just go back to this little uh, Minesweeper game or whatever, you know. But he's, you know, he's, he's coding. He's incredibly smart. And so he's building it. But I'm like, hey, but we got to have this mouse, you know. So those kinds of things. And so we incorporated that in the business. Like, y'all have a painting over here. It's pretty big. Uh, wasn't that big, but, you know, we had a painting where people come in and it'd make them laugh or whatever, you know, yeah. and just kind of engage them, even though the place looked like crap. You know what I mean? We had blue walls, like baby blue walls. I have no idea why we painted that color. It was probably, <laughs> like, on special. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. They probably had a five-gallon bucket that was mixed, like, you know, hey, you accidentally mixed it this blue color. And there's no we'll way we're it. getting out. Oh, like, hey. 15 bucks, I'll take it. You know? <laughs> Played the whole place with it. And so it's hanging on a while, you know. And, uh, and so people just engaging people like that. And I think over the years, we, we, we did that. And then, uh, you know, we did crazy stuff. We The first cars we had, those Hondas, I was like, I had a vision. I was like, Mark, we need to have a racing stripe. But instead of being a racing stripe, it's going to be a road from front to back. You know, that's, that's going to be a racing stripe. So we ran that with vinyl letters. You know, it's funny now. We have half wraps, and we only buy white Toyota Corolla LEs. And when you look at them, they look fully wrapped. You're like, oh, man, these cars are totally wrapped. Well, full wrap, y'all may know, costs more you expensive. three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 pop. So what if we just make a, what if we get a design made, a half wrap or a quarter wrap or their wrap, or whatever they call it now, I don't forget what it's called. I wonder how much that would cost us. Because we knew we needed a step up our game. We needed a half. We needed our vehicles to match the vision of, of what was then our, our new location. That's the brand building. The brand building. I right? love so, that. So you, you're kind of, you, you're making sure that everything that you're doing is on the same level and you yeah. always find something lagging behind, you know, you're oh, okay, pull this one up, pull that one up, yeah. but everything's got a price attached to it. So we're working hard, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to build all this different stuff. And, and so we come up with this half wrap. We design it. I designed it in Photoshop, the original. It's actually on the cars today. I mean, we've had designers go back and like, you know, this looks like you did it, but we're, we're going to freshen it up for you now. Yeah. So they've done a much better job freshening it up. And so we did a half wrap, and we our price went down from an unaffordable thirty, you know, nine hundred bucks or whatever it was back then. Uh, you know, now we're paying something like a thousand bucks, you know, to wrap, to quarter wrap, half wrap the car. But you can't tell the difference. Yeah, yeah. You know, it looks it looks good. So that's. You're finding these creative ways to get the brand that you want, but you can't necessarily afford. Yeah, yeah. And you just start building, building things based on that. And so, uh, so anyway, so we we eventually now have a fleet of these vehicles, you know, that are you know all branded appropriately. They all have the mouse. Everybody knows the mouse. You know the mouse is good. Those jokers from Taco Bell ain't laughing now. No, yeah. I don't think so. But <laughs> I don't think so. You know, uh, and so you know we've had a lot of great success with you know our branding, our model, you know, making sure that we're there to take care of folks, uh, connecting with people. You know, we we get being able to be agile. I mean that's one of the biggest things about it you can have the brand you can bring the people in if you're not nimble enough to address you know new concerns you know we have kids who are coming in who've maybe been in a traumatic car accident and you know the student may have been involved or they've lost a loved one well quite frank with you i mean some of our videos can be very graphic and so are you nimble enough to have a replacement for those folks? Do you have systems in place to take care of your customers? Man, so I love all these creative ways that you kind of thought about your business and, you know, not not like try to be cheap, but you found ways around like the, the, the protocol, the normal protocol. Yeah. And there was this book I read. It was called The Power Broke. It was by one of those dudes on Shark Tank, uh, Draymond John. He started FUBU and everything. And he basically interviewed just a ton of people who had started with nothing, like Steve Aoki. He's like a DJ, a few guys like that. They started from nothing and then 
through that struggle, through having nothing, they use those creative forces to become something. And I think that's really exactly what Intel's like your journey through West Metro driving school. Like you, you had to be creative and you creatively helped your family, got your mom out of debt, did amazing things, man. And so I love hearing those, those little things that, that really end up making your entire career. And if you're, if we're real, like there's a few little things we've done that have really paid off for us. Yeah. So, and building that brand, it's so cool because, you know, you build the brand and you get them in the door, but how many companies can build the brand, but then they can't keep the customer because they may not have good character. So something that I want to say is, you know, having the success that you have and everything that I've ever done with you, you do have character. So that ultimately you have high character, it leads to success in business. We say it time and time again. So the way that you handle, I love what you said a minute ago about the one-off students who have had this, we try to put place and make them feel safe, make them feel comfortable. That's high character, man, because yeah. you could say, we don't have many of those cases. I'm not really worried about those people. You know, let's just focus on the our bread and butter who's paying the money. That character shows up time and time again in successful people that we interview. And I've seen it myself with you. So I know right. that I know that that's a real uh, benefit to why you've had success is that character. And this parlays us into the House of Representatives because obviously you're asking people to vote for you. Yeah. You're you're asking us to trust you with what you know. You go to bat for us, so. It goes back to that character. So where where was it in your life when you're like, man, I'm gonna go run for office? How, how early was that? And what was that journey like for you? So it was actually another business story. Uh, you know, and I think if I'm thinking about, you know, the way that I got kind of interested in politics, and I'll, I'll tell you a story. So we had, at this point, had a lot of business success. We're in our second location. We're really building this program where, I mean, you know, we're starting to feel the impacts, I think, of like, you know, the brand getting out there, the brand awareness, having our cars in the community. I mean, that, you know, once you start getting a certain level of like, um, I think brand awareness being in, you know, having enough employees out there that are like, hey, if you need driver's ed, you know, I'll teach you just all the different, the confluence of different factors that lead you to start being this transaction machine, right? This, this, this thing, this, this, this this business that's living that's that's you know it's yeah. it's it's just healthy it's thriving and so we have been at this point through the recession you know the great recession and every and why like, well, if we can make it through this <laughs> we can make it through anything you know and so we're coming out of that now right um, and so we get into the election uh, of the presidential election in two thousand and uh 16 mm -hmm. and you know then pres or then candidate donald trump comes down the golden escalators and he says a lot of things that i agree with mm -hmm. and i get behind president trump 100 percent. and to that fact i put a big humongous sticker on the back of my truck at that point i, I was driving like a 2000 maybe 2001 uh, Toyota Tundra, it had the suicide doors in the back of it, you know, it was white. I love that truck, good which truck. I never sold it. It was a, good, yeah, it was a great good truck. truck. <laughs> and uh, had big old Trump stick on the back of it. Y'all remember those big, those big, they said Trump, make America great again, had the stars on it, whatever. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, bam, I'm in, right? I'm not driving this thing everywhere. I've got exhaust on it, you know. I'm your typical, you know, this Paul and Candy guy driving this truck. Yeah. I love it. It's awesome. Still am, by the way. Uh, but so I, I'm driving around. I pull in, you know, my office, and we get all right. So <clears throat> being in our business, you know, of course, I, as a conservative, uh, you know, I'm I love small, you know, government, low taxes, small government, uh, and and personal liberty. And so <clears throat> pull up. And then it must have been right behind me, one of our state regulators pulls up. Hmm. One that we have had a great relationship for many years. Now, I can't tell you exactly why, but all of a sudden we go from what's called, you know, these risk-based, you know, whatever, into these big comprehensive audits, seemingly overnight. Mm. Wow. With, you know, some questions about, you know, I think what 
and who you know maybe we were supporting for a you know potential presidential candidate. And that, look, before Trump, I had never really been interested in politics per se. Like I love history, I love politics. Uh, I've always liked politics. I've liked just following it, but I've never been interested maybe in being in politics. Yeah. Right. And so, but Trump has inspired me. Self funds his campaign. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm like, this guy is awesome. I love it. This is the kind of thing that we need. I mean, you go back to the 2016 campaign, he's self-funding. You know, he's saying the things that I think every American wanted to hear. Uh, you know, you had the Rust Belt that was fired up about bringing jobs and factories back to the United States. And it was a pro-American platform, you yeah. know. And as someone who's a small business owner who grew up broke, you know, I related with a lot of that. You know, I want to see people... I. I I tell people all the time, I'm like, hey, you know, I recommend uh, prosperity to every everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and the good thing is in the United States, it's possible for everybody. Mm -hmm. Don't so care who true. you are. So and true. so I recommend it to everyone, you know. And uh, so I get behind it, and all of a sudden, it changes for us. And we start getting all these kinds of crazy, you know, reports back. And we start getting all these crazy types of, of uh, audits. You know, once you get one, you get another. And we're like, whoa, what? What has changed? Nothing about our operations have changed. You know, this is the same. Why? Why are you going from being here for you know two or three hours doing this to now you're staying here for three days? Mm. So you can imagine stress, right? What, I mean, you're like, what changed? And then it clicked. Me and my brother had these stickers on the back of our vehicles. Wow. And so we get effectively targeted because of our choice of presidential candidate, mm -hmm. right? In 2000, this is 2016. I'm out, you know, even in the primary, they're at the general. Uh, and y'all know how crazy of a campaign 2016 was. Oh, yeah. And so we end up getting basically they attempt to take us down mm -hmm. like the state agency that that oversees all kinds of businesses basically just tries to take us down just for fun and we're like whoa hold on now we've got all that you know let me show you what, what all this means we, we can take you through it nope not accepting it nope not accepting it mm -hmm. and you think now we've gone through this whole story yeah yeah. Three hundred seventeen dollars. Wife, kids, family, mother, from nothing. Yeah, living in this office. Now you've got a regulator coming in who says, "I'm sorry, mm. we're gonna shut you down." Yeah, we fight. I don't know if we can say it. We fight like hell. Yeah. yeah. And so we started calling our state reps, telling them, "Hey, this is the situation." This is what's happening. You know, this is what's happening. You know, we, we went from, tell me how we go from this to a three, four day audit where people are coming in and looking and crazy. And we knew we were being targeted. And we fight, we fight, we fight. We caught our reps. We went there. We talked to them. It was then uh, Howard Maxwell, uh, Pilate Rates trial. I think Bill Heath was in. We talked to all of them. <clears throat> and so, you know, over a span of six, I guess, to eight months in which we were having to go through this witch hunt, I think it's the best term for it, mm -hmm. we get to the end and we win. Mm -hmm. nice. So long story short, I mean, there's a lot you could say about it, but we get to the end of it and we win. Perfect. Right? And we defend, you know, who we are, the job we're doing, you know, the employees at the time who... We're employing. You remember, we're, we're employing these people. <clears throat> and I made a promise to myself right then. I said, if I ever get a chance to serve, I'll make sure this never happens to another small business owner. Man, I love that. So that pain pushed you 100%. into like, man, I need to go do something about this. I had no interest in politics, being a politician, or doing any of that. But when we talk about, you know, we talk about the things that, mat that matter, you know, 
and you talk about cutting red tape, and you talk about small government, there is nobody who I feel like, well, sure, there's other people. I, surely there are other people out there who understand this. But when you've been there, you understand it. Yeah. You understand what small government looks like. You understand what red tape looks like. You understand the power of a bureaucracy mm -hmm. or rules and regs that are written too vague or, you know, the conveyance of, of too much power to bureaucracy through uh, code and through Georgia line. So I felt that. And I may, I was like, look, if I ever get this opportunity, I'm going to make sure this never happens to another small business owner respect, ever again. I respect that so much. And so, you know, I was really, I mean, wasn't really looking for it. I had known several folks in the community and, you know, had heard that uh, Howard Maxwell was going to retire. And so I reached out to him. We had a conversation. He said, look, I, you know, I've been thinking about not going in. Of course, he had some questions. He was like, well, I want to make sure you're qualified to be here. You know, he wanted, you know, he didn't want somebody, you know, of course, he can't give it to nobody, you know. You yeah. have to run for one way or another. And, uh, but he had a lot of questions, and uh, we talked for quite some time. I said, well, I'm not going to run against you, you know, but I want, I want the opportunity to defend taxpayers, to defend businesses that are in this community from the crap that I had to go through. And... I was blessed with that opportunity. So he calls me back in 2018. He's like, put your running shoes on. I think January 7th, I announced uh, that he announced that he was not coming back to uh, the state house. And I announced on January 7th that I was I was getting in. And uh, we ran a campaign and won. And so, you know, it's been that way since. Yeah. So, you know, people ask me, you know, I think a lot of times, like, what is the most, like, do you enjoy your time, you know, there? Or, or what, what do you enjoy most about your time in the state legislature? And that has to be the number one thing is I love helping the people, not only in my district, but in the county. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, people who have issues either with their business or a state agency that, you know, they just won't perform their duties. By God, if you've got a state agency that won't perform their duty, I guarantee you, you have found the bulldog you need because I will make sure they perform. I love that. Uh, because so is that what you primarily get to do now is kind of go to bat for those teams in your role? Because we were kind of talking yeah. like we don't really. Yeah, so, I'm curious what all so, your roles are there. So in the state legislature, it's a bicameral body. You have the state senate. Our state senator in Pawnee County is Jason Avatardi. You have five reps now who represent a portion of Pawnee County. Uh, me and Joseph Gullett represent Pawnee County in its entirety in, in our entire districts. Then you've got Trey Kelly, who covers a portion. Uh, you've got Kimberly New, who covers a portion. Tyler Powell Smith, uh, who covers a portion. Uh, so that is your delegation uh, for Pawnee County. So, and we all serve in the House. The five members serve in the House. Uh, of course, you have a governor and all that. But we have one constitutional task, and that is to pass the state budget. In that budget, uh, for example, I serve as uh, as a member on the uh, Transportation Appropriations Subcommittee. So, you know, any road projects or anything that gets funded or GDOT or anything like that goes through those, you know, kinds of committees. And so we pass, you know, primarily the budget. That's the biggest thing, an amended budget. Once we have re-reconciled last year's budget to see do we have more money, um, you know, we're a zero-based budget, which means that we cannot spend more than we take, which is different because we don't take on debts like uh, like the federal government does uh, in, in, in the way that they do. That we don't print money, right? Uh, and so Thank goodness. We, it's, it's all zero-based. So what's, what's taken in, we give back. This past year, you know, we gave back a billion dollars in homeowner uh, tax assessment credits. So you'll see that on your tax assessment. I think it's about five, six hundred dollars a uh, a person, depending on your home and other factors. And then we give a billion dollars back on the income tax, state income tax, which is typically about three to five hundred dollars as well, I believe. So those are the budgetary things we pass laws. I mean, you know, you saw things like constitutional carry get passed, where now, uh, you know, you can carry a firearm with you um, without having to have the uh, the weapons carry permit on you. Um, so there, there's a lot of different 
bills that we pass. I mean, we pass um, everything from educational policy to motor vehicle policy to uh, you know, health policy. It, it just depends, um, you know, what what we get to see. Uh, insurance policy, you know, y'all are insurance agents. Um, there was a bill, you know, for example, this is just a, an odd thing, but ins the insurance companies like y'all's and agents have come together and said, hey, we want to be able to give out. Uh, a so this was Matthew Gamble's bill, and he's a great, great rep, friend of mine, and he said, we want to be able to give out smoke detectors because doesn't that make sense? Like, hey, come in for a quote, we want to give you, we want to be, but state law prohibited them giving gifts to get a quote. Oh, yeah. So we allow them to give out things like a smoke detector, mm -hmm. which would, you know, potentially, you know, maybe save, certainly save lives, we know that, but maybe save a structure as well, right? Yeah. And so- We need to start using uh, that. Well, there you go. Hey, look, y'all got, <laughs> got your business tip for the day. Yeah. I, I want to say that bill passed the Senate, you know, once it gets out of the House, you know, it has passed the Senate, it has to be signed by the governor. I believe it did. I have to check on that for you. But those are the kinds of things that That's we cool. can, that we consider down. Yeah. And you, don't, state you don't get to hear that every day, man. Um, one thing as we as we wrap up, one thing that we always ask each guest on our show and, uh, you know, we, we named it Pave the Way. And so Pave the Way, what it means to us is like we're, we're setting the future for the people behind us. So what That's is one? Holes. What is one piece of advice or one thing that you could say that you've learned throughout either your political career or your career from 18 to here with West Metro Driving School that you would really like to leave behind to someone that's in a, in a lower generation? Say say you're talking to your 18-year-old self right now. What would you tell him based on what you've learned so far that could help him pave the way? Yeah, don't lift heavy stuff and ruin your back. No, kidding. Um, <laughs> hey, that's, not, that's uh, solid uh, advice, yeah, man. That's solid, solid advice, yeah. I wish I could go back and just smack me at 26 when I was lifting. <laughs> I lifted a trailer and blew up my L5S1. Still oh. bad today. But anyway, outside of that advice, uh, I would probably say don't give up. Man, nice. I would say don't give up. Don't give up. It feels like giving up will make you feel great. It does. It, it feels like it all go away. feels like it would relieve you. But it, don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up. You know, I, several times I think over, you know, my business, politics. I think as business owners or people who represent other people, you know, as, a, as an elected official, we often don't have the ability to look around corners and see the good that's there. Yeah. yeah. And so don't give up. I, I mean, I would tell you, don't give up. It may feel like you're at the end of your rope. It may feel like you don't have the opportunity or the ability, or you feel like people at Taco Bell may be making fun of you. People at Taco Bell may be making fun of you. You know, they may be laughing hysterically at you. Don't give up. Dream killers. Yeah. Dude, That's amazing. A recession, COVID, a visit at Taco Bell, uh, you know, so many things. An audit, they, a huge audit. Huge audit, state trying to shut you down. Uh, over ridiculous reasons. I mean, you, you, I mean, you look at all these things that we could have quit and just said, I'm done. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm over this. Several points where I've said, well, you know, I've done pretty well. I can just get out now. Uh, don't give up. Keep hustling. Keep grinding. It is a hustle. It is a grind. Yes. Don't stop. Keep going. There's hope around the corner. Your next big thing is just beyond the crest of that hill. Dude, that's good. There's only one way to fail. That's if you quit. That's right. so true. So. Well, do you, um, I, it's interesting having a politician. I just wanted to give you kind of, if you want to, any any vision that you're kind of cast, because we talked about how many times you're thinking about running. And you said, I'm just going to serve until I don't feel led to serve anymore. So is there anything now that you're doing, like vision for the future that you would like to share with us of, of kind of like what you're seeing our country headed in what direction and kind of where you want it to go. Yeah, I mean, I will tell you, I mean, just from a, from a, there's a lot of issues that are facing our country right now that are not partisan, that are getting left behind in the dust because I think um, you know, we get so enamored with the fight, you know, and, and everybody's for their team. Look, I'm a strong conservative, small government, less spending, uh, more liberty guy, 100%. But there's a lot of issues. And I think, 
that we all need to look at several external or externalities that are, are going to start affecting us soon, and that is, you know, the rise of China's power uh, in uh, in the East. Uh, they've got um, the, you know, I passed a bill that uh, prohibited the purchase of Chinese-owned uh, company technology uh, in the state of Georgia, uh, and because we know that the Chinese government is spying on American citizens, American politicians to extort, embarrass them, uh, or to uh, control them uh, once they either achieve another level uh, or, 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 or otherwise, or maybe they get appointed to a position of power. Um, you know, there is a lot of these countries who are looking at us uh, to fail. Real quick, guys, this is Rob with the Wheeling Agency. I just wanted to reach out to y'all. We've been in business a little over three years here in Paulding County. We take pride in serving our community, so next time you're in the need for some insurance, give us a call and reach out. Now get back to the show. Okay. okay. Yeah, so finish that thought. So, yeah, so I think there are a lot of different, a lot of our adversaries out there that are looking for us to fail. Yeah. That, uh, you know, they are waging wagering that their success comes in our failure. And there is a certain set of American values that is uh, neither Republican nor Democrat. Yes. Uh, and we need to make sure that we are still prioritizing those as Americans. You know, uh, I grew up in an age where uh, we were in the same school, probably. I think they moved us from Herschel to South Paulding. Did you go yeah, South Paulding? from Herschel to Moses that year. Moses that year. So, I remember being in the classroom and uh, and and 9/11 happening, and I can still feel the love that this country has for each other. Yeah, the unity and the unity this country had for each other, and there has to be some of that left. Yes. And we so outside of even a political nature, you know, I would I would say you know there has to be some way for us as Americans to pull together and agree on on a common set of values. We're not gonna agree on everything. No. Uh, but, you know, a, uh, we can agree on most things. And when it comes to making sure that our country is, you know, successful, it's thriving, its economy is bright, has a bright future for our children, um, then, and we're protecting this country, then I think those are the things that we need to work on and find common ground. Dude, I love that so much because I think, more than anything in this world that we're living in right now, we need unity because they're selling the vision. Like they're selling the vision. So we have the power to unite as a country and we can, we are, like you said, a lot of countries are looking to us, for us to fail, but a lot of countries are looking for us to, to have the right moves. And if we're not united, we're not going to have those right moves. Right. So dude, I can't thank you enough for coming yeah, on. Yeah. This Absolutely. has been so cool. I, 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 your story just uh, really inspired me. It really well, did. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I really like where your heart's at with what you're doing in the political space. So well, um, so. we're honored to have you on, man. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate Absolutely. you. Yeah. Yep. Sleeping at farmers tonight. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that was good.